Hey guys, Luke Clausen here. Uh, you know, probably the most common question I get from people that uh, know we fish all over the country and fish all these lakes is how do you go to a new lake and just find fish? And that is a question that's a good answer because it's not an easy one. There's a ton of information out there on the internet and a lot of it is not great information. A lot of it's not relevant information, I should say. Not that it's not great, but how I go about approaching these lakes that is the same way a lot of other pro anglers do because we travel to new lakes all over the country, whether it's Texas or Florida or New York, and we're always going to new lakes at different times of the year. But, you know, I think the best way to research a lot of these lakes is to, first of all, go online and just Google the name of the lake. If it's Lake Fork, Texas, and you're gonna be there the middle of March, Look at Lake Fork, Texas currently, but most importantly, look at previous years. And we're gonna see a natural progression of those fish in a lot of these lakes, whether it's smallmouth, largemouth, whatever. They do a lot of the same things the same years, but it may be at a different time. So I may look at Lake Fork in March, but I realize in 2019, for example, it was unseasonably cold there. So I may change a search there to go in at April. And try to find those same times of year that fit with the weather patterns you're faced with, but don't be afraid to go back three or four or five years. You get beyond that, some of these lakes change enough that we see grass in different areas. Things may be very different. A lot of the baits and the stories are still relevant. Another thing is tournament results and reports. Um, you know, you're gonna see winning baits and you have a pretty good idea if everybody's catching them on a frog that they were up very shallow that time of year. But if everybody's out throwing a jerk bait off, out off of points, you know, a lot of those fish really hadn't moved up yet. Gives you a pretty good starting place. There's still a lot to be learned when you get to the lake, but at least it gives you a starting point for those lakes. And of course, water colors changes in a lot of the southern impoundments. We get a lot of rain, but throughout those stories, you put clues together. And that's just kind of a starting point for you. One other thing that we'll do is uh, use, spend a lot of time on Google Earth. If you go back on Google Earth, especially on a laptop or a PC, you can go back several years. A lot of lakes that have drawdowns, there's pictures of when the water was low, there's pictures of the water in the summer. And why that's relevant is in the summer, even though you're there in the spring, you can a lot of times see vegetation growing up in summer and fall pictures that you can't see the rest of the year. And you know those areas of the lake have more vegetation, a lot of times have more bass. And uh, those are all things we look at. I'm sure there's a ton of things out there. Looking at mapping can be very valuable too if you know what you're looking for. Just looking at a blanket map, a little bit hard to tell, but knowing what you're looking for, the map is the last thing I do because then you start to have ideas. You start to understand these areas. These fish maybe are moving up onto flats or they're moving out on these drops. You start to have ideas of what to look for. But that's the last place I look personally. And uh, hopefully that helps you when you go to a new lake. Those are all kind of progression we do. And again, it's a starting point. You got to figure it out when you get there. But I know it's helped me a lot over the years going to new bodies of the water.